Hello and welcome everybody to today's lecture about understanding the electric grid, the requirements, the structure and the grid stability, which are essential to provide us with regular, reliable and safe electrical energy. So as explained in lecture A1, there are two focuses for an electrical grid to satisfy. One is the energy as a global quantity and the other one is the power as local quantity. For the sake of completeness, I just show you the full content of my lecture, but today we concentrate on the load profile, so on the power question, the load profile of the network user. So let's get started. Let's get up on a Saturday morning. So we get up and around eight o'clock we prepare breakfast for ourselves and our dear ones by boiling eggs, warming a cup of coffee or milk, and for this we need just one plate of our stove. This is the first one here. Then at lunch we prepare on two plates with double the power that is needed. For example, boiling potatoes on one plate and frying a steak on the other plate. And in the evening we maybe we warm up what was left over and maybe we make a pudding, something like this. So you see, the load profile of the stove is nothing, goes up to 2 kilowatts, switched off, 4 kilowatts, switched off, and goes up to 4 and 1, and then it's zero again. Now, this stove is part of our electrical household. So in our electrical household, you see again, we find the morning frying the eggs, we find lunch, boiling potatoes, frying a steak, and in the evening making a pudding. We find this again. But you see, if you check at the bottom, there's something that regularly goes up and down. So think what this could be. It is, yes, you got it right. It's the fridge. It's switched on, switched off. This is a regular load, which is found virtually in every household. So now when we go from one household to a little settlement, say for example of 500 detached houses, then again we see the lunch peak, we see the evening peak and we see that in the evening the power consumption goes down. We go to bed and take with us electricity, so also electricity goes to bed, is switched off. And the whole system can be found even if we have a larger area, for example a city of a few hundred thousand people, we again, we see the lunch peak and we see the evening peak where the power consumption goes down. Now, there are two iron rolls which lead to the construction of electric network and which must be observed. They are iron rules. Iron rule number one is load is current and peak load is peak current. Quite easy. The second one is iron rule number two. Iron rule number two says the peak current determines the cross-section of the cable, of the line, of the overhead line. And once it is installed, we are limited. We cannot extend this easily. So this means the peak current, which we must look for, is the measure for the installation purpose. So now let's apply these two rules to our example of our household, etc., etc. So let's take the lunch peak. So this is responsible for the thickness of the cables in the walls, so to say. So the whole household connection is described in number two. Then if we have this little settlement, it has just one line that goes into it. This is the neighborhood supply. And if it comes to a whole city, then we have this district supply, city supply, which again is controlled by the peak load. It's the peak load, it's the peak power, not the energy. So it's the peak one that is decisive. Now let's take an application of this rule. How can we manage if the peak load, whatever this may be, goes up and we have a limited line? So this is a real measure of a rural network user. It's a farm with cows, by the way. So what you can see here easily in the morning and evening, the cows are milked, the milk is cooled down, this needs energy, energy, and in the middle at lunchtime, people have lunch. So now let's see if we extend this to 10 more or less identical rural households. I go back just one slide, watch at the right top corner. 
you see one household has a peak of something like 50 kilowatts corresponding to 25 kilowatt hours. And if we have 10 households, it's 10 times as much. Okay. So now, if we have a problem with the cross section of the cable, with the peak power, we can do the following. We can share the 10 households, group one is 50%, group two is 50%. And each one has only half the peak load. And if we spread these, the total peak load must come down. And this can be even extended to three groups. And you see what we have reached here. The three groups by load shifting save the peak load. So we can get with the same type of cable more energy through, but with less peak load. So this is the benefit of load shifting, saving peak load, getting more energy through an already installed line. But this needs somehow an adjustment of the consumer behavior. So this was today's lesson about load profile of the network users. I thank you very much for staying on and please stay tuned to my course.